Hi everybody, uh, Dr. Lefkoff here with an installment today of Intermediate Macro Theory uh, and in this particular video segment we're going to go through uh, a very detailed example of how to solve the baseline solo growth model uh, with a Cobb-Douglas, a very general Cobb-Douglas technology. Um, so moving right along, uh, the objective today is going to be to solve the model and we're going to do this essentially in three steps. First by writing out all the elements of the model and defining the law of motion for our capital stock per capita. Uh, second thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the steady state values of the capital stock and then since everything else, uh, output and consumption depend on the capital stock, we'll also be able to figure out income and consumption as well. Uh, and we're going to describe all these variables as functions of the exogenous model parameters such as the savings rate, uh, the depreciation rate, total factor productivity, uh, and the production parameter alpha. Uh, third thing we're going to do today is sort of an application of our knowledge of the steady state behavior and that is going to be to find the savings rate that actually optimizes the consumption profile. Uh, in a sense, what we're going to be doing is choosing the best steady state uh, using the relationships we find in step two. So let's uh, jump right into it and discuss first the elements of the model. So the very first thing we're going to have to deal with uh, is the <clears throat> aggregate production technology here, which is our, uh, our famous constant returns to scale Cobb-Douglas production function. Uh, you'll notice here we have aggregate output Y as a function of large aggregate output K and large L, which is labor. Um, alpha and, uh, and A are our usual productivity parameters. A is total factor productivity, and alpha, remember, represents that capital share of income, and they're both exogenous. Uh, we can divide through by L to rewrite the production function in terms of per capita terms, and this is always can be done if you have a constant returns to scale technology. Um, <clears throat> And we're going to have a very simple consumption function. Recall consumption, uh, given some exogenous savings rate S, our consumption is just going to be the percentage of our income that we don't save, uh, which in this case is going to be 1 minus S times Y. Um, and then we can plug in uh, our functional forms of our production function to get consumption then as a function of capital if we need to. Uh, next component of our model was investment. Okay, recall through the uh, GDP accounting identity, output equals capital plus investment since we have no uh, government and no net exports in this model. Um, and we can just go ahead and very carefully substitute through using the relationship of our consumption function to find uh, that investment is equal to savings, um, which is a, another familiar thing that we've seen in our little funds model. Uh, and last but not least, and maybe the most important element of this model is the law of motion for the capital stock. Um, so, given the exogenous depreciation rate uh, that I'm going to use here, delta, as I've used in lecture, uh, we can define the change in the capital stock per person as just the difference between investment, which is how much we add to the capital stock, less the amount of the capital stock that's diminished or depreciated. And so, essentially, it's uh, you know the change in the capital stock is the new capital from investment minus the old capital that's that's worn out and depreciated. Uh, note that we can substitute in for investment using the above relationship. Right, Investment is equal to savings in the previous line and then we can also um, just substitute directly in using the production technology to find the equation for a law of motion of capital uh, as a function only of capital and the exogenous model parameters. Uh, so here's the full model workup um, and just to, to be clear here, we did have four exogenous parameters. Those parameters were A and alpha and the production technology, the exogenous, study, uh, the exogenous rate of savings, S, and the exogenous rate of depreciation, delta. All right, moving along. So uh, we want to solve for the steady state. So we're going to impose the definition of the steady state, which is that in the steady state, uh, the variable itself is not growing, which means capital per person is not going to be growing. So the change in it's equal to zero. Uh, substituting into our uh, equation from the previous slide for the law of motion of capital, recall if capital is not changing per person, then it must be the case that we're saving exactly as much capital that's being depreciated. So savings must be equal to uh, the depreciated capital. Uh, we can plug in our production function here in this next step. Uh, and then very carefully, I'm going to divide both sides by this red term k to the alpha. So then on the right hand side, uh, I'm going to wind up, well, we'll just have to be careful with our algebra, and I'm also going to divide this delta on the right-hand side over to the left. So, uh, again, I'm going to move the k to the alpha underneath on the right. I'm going to move this delta underneath on the left. When I do that, 
uh, we wind up with the following expression and just be very careful here with your exponent subtraction uh, when you do divide that k to the alpha term to the left. Uh, next step I'm going to raise both sides to 1 over this power in red here 1 over 1 minus alpha and that'll let me isolate k for my final answer here uh, and you'll notice that I'm able to write now the steady state level of capital as a function of all four exogenous parameters. Okay, so we can really see now how these different elements of the economic environment uh, would affect the steady state level of capital stock per person. Uh, namely, uh, we should note that because alpha is between 0 and 1, right, in order to maintain diminishing marginal product and constant returns to scale for our model here, uh, note that alpha being in that range implies that that power on k star is going to be a positive number. Okay, so notice if that power is a positive number, then most certainly the steady state level of, uh, of capital per capita uh, is definitely an increasing function of the parameters s and the parameter a, because both of them appear up in the numerator. Uh, notice that the steady state level of capital is actually decreasing in the depreciation rate delta. Delta appears in the denominator of that expression. And uh, don't forget, uh, if you're not sure just by looking at it, you can always verify whether or not the function is increasing or decreasing in a parameter by taking the partial derivative with respect to that parameter. Okay, so here's where we are. We've plotted the steady state value. We found the value of k star for a particular savings rate. And in this next slide, notice for a particular value of k then, <clears throat> we can figure out how much output we would be able to produce using that capital input. Uh, and then we would know exactly how much investment we would have. And the difference then between my output y and my investment i must be how much I've consumed, given that the only two uses for the output in this model were either consumption, I could eat, uh, or I could invest, I could save it for later to make more stuff. OK, so. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, we want to f solve the rest of the model, um, which means we're going to go ahead and figure out the steady state levels of output and capital per person. So we do, or I'm sorry, uh, output and consumption per person. Uh, so we already know capital. Capital was, uh, was not too tough here. And then I'm just going to plug in uh, capital essentially into the production function to find output. And then I'm going to plug output into the consumption function. Uh, in order to find consumption in the steady state. So this shouldn't be too hard here. My output per steady state is again just found by plugging in my inputs in the steady state into the production function. And likewise, um, you'll notice there's just a slight difference in the way output in the steady state looks compared to capital. Right, That exponent 1 is different than this exponent alpha. Also this total factor productivity term is showing up here. Um, and lastly, we can substitute then the value of y star into the consumption function uh, to get consumption as a function of all the exogenous model parameters. You know, a couple things to sort of notice here, that if we were to change the savings rate s, or if maybe the depreciation rate delta would change, that actually would affect all the steady state values here of k, of y, and of c. Uh, and what that actually implies for us um, is that as the level of savings changes, it actually would induce different steady state levels of the capital stock per person K. Um, so it should be clear that as, you know, as we look at different levels of the savings rate between 0 and 100%, what we would actually wind up doing uh, is essentially moving us between um, different steady states. Because uh, recall, in the steady state, savings is equal to uh, depreciation, right? The amount of capital I save just offsets the amount of capital I've lost due to depreciation. Uh, so that the change in the capital stock is exactly zero. All right, so again, uh, we've seen this diagram before. This was showing us one particular steady state here that corresponded to a particular savings rate. Uh, but as I mentioned before, this is just one steady state. And as we change the savings rate, the steady states can also change. So uh, before we end this part of the video segment, let me show you exactly what I mean by inducing different steady states. Uh, by uh, changing the savings rate. So just look at this next diagram here. You'll notice if I increase the savings rate, right, it scales the investment function up. If I decrease it, it's going to scale it back down. Okay, but basically, by changing the savings rate here, we're able to move the economy between these different steady states, K1, K2, and K3 star. Right, so we can just look at these steady states here. Okay, furthermore, if we wanted to, we could think about all the different possible steady states we could induce.
And we could also think about the levels of consumption that correspond to these different steady states. And we're going to talk about the issue of choosing the best consumption uh, in the next video sequence.